Hey friends, Patrick here, and I know what you're thinking. This is such a clickbaity title and thumbnail text. Patrick, why are you doing this, man? I liked you, and now I have to... Don't unsubscribe, please don't unsubscribe. I know it's a tiny bit clickbaity, maybe, maybe a bit mysterious, the title, but otherwise, maybe now you are going to learn something. And if I titled this video, hey, this is how to use the static implicit operator or the static explicit operator in C sharp, then maybe you would have not clicked this video, although you do not know what this is. If you know what this is, and if you already know how to use these operators, then feel free to stop the video. Happy about that. Great that you already know that. But if you don't, then maybe now it's time to learn something. So I already told you, in the first seconds of the video, it is about the static implicit operator and the static explicit operator. What is that stuff? It is actually there in C-sharp for a long time and I think you're using it maybe even daily. If you are, for instance, building a .NET Web API and this is what I have open here on my screen, I just created uh, the uh, .NET Web API, I used the default template here in Visual Studio and I already went to the weather forecast controller and this is what you can see here, right? It is returning, it's a controller, it's an endpoint, a get method returning an I enumerable, a list in the end or an array of weather forecasts. Now, when I build my controllers and when you already watched maybe some videos of mine, of me, then I tend to use the following. I return an action result and then I also add the type here. Now the interesting thing here is that this is now another type, but the compiler isn't complaining at all. This still works, right? Because what you may want to use is write something like that. Okay. And then in, uh, or as an argument, then the actual object that you want to return because okay now, is an okay object result. And when we have a look here, it is an object result or inheriting from that. And then this thing, there it is, this is then the action result. And now when we go back, we can also see we have an action result here, action result with the T value type. And when we go here, then we scroll a bit further down and there we see something like that, static implicit operator and here the same thing. Now in essence, this just means that you can use or in this case return one type and this is then implicitly converted to another type and in this specific case here, we want to actually return an action result with a certain type and you can Instead, just return the actual type, or in this case, the T value, as you can see here. So this means that this here, what I now selected, this is the actual target type, for instance, that we, in our case, want to return. And this is the, the source type, right? And it still works because here then you see that with the help of this operator, we are returning then the actual target type with the value of the source type. I know maybe a bit complicated here. So we are going to build some examples in this video today. But now first, when we run this or restart the application, then we see Swagger here already opened it. And now when you uh, go to the uh, developer tools network tab, we filter by fetch XHR XML HTTP requests, then we try this thing out, hit execute, and then we see we get the status code 200. Okay, so this works and we get uh, the data that we expect. Everything's fine, although we can also do it like that and not returning an action result actually, but just returning the I enumerable. But as you can see here, we try this out, hit execute, and we still get the data and can already see it here. Beautiful stuff. And again, I'm pretty sure you're using this thing daily and uh, now I want to show you how you can actually build or use it yourself, not with a controller, but just with a simple console application, for instance. All right, so here's now the console application. And I know I got some comments about using something more serious and professional instead of my superhero examples, for instance. So I decided to use something Star Wars related this time. So as you can see here, I have a force class. I just uh, played through 
Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Great Souls-like game, by the way, if you like games like that. It is easier than Dark Souls, I guess, but still great game. And that's why I'm into Star Wars now. So here our Force class. Now, what is that? In the end, we are going to implement some kind of, or this is some kind of a Force meter, meaning we have a power level, which is an integer. All right, so this is important. This thing is an integer, the power level, and the actual class is a complete custom type, the force. Now, what can we do with that? Well, we have a constructor, of course, where we can set the power level with this argument, the initial power, and then we have two functions here. We can use the power with a certain amount, and with this amount is uh, used, or the method is used, then we just subtracted the value from the power level, and we could also regenerate our force, because we are a Jedi Knight, so we can do that, and for that also we provide an amount. So, and now to our program CS, now here I have, let's say a new, a new character with a force value, a power level of 100, and now we want to use a skill, like a force push, force pull, something like that, and this costs us 30. Now, I want to check, do we have enough force? And if so, we can use the power, all right? So what can we do here now is we can just use a, an if statement here and we check if the force is greater or equal the skill cost, wait a sec, we get an error. Operator cannot be applied to operands of type force and integer. Well, that's bad, right? No, not with the static implicit operator. But let me first continue here and then we will add something to our force class. So here now, what I want to do is I want to use the use power function with the skill cost and then we can uh, write something to the console like for instance, force skill used success fully. All right, there's the exclamation mark. Now, if this is not the case, then what we have to do is maybe write something like write line, all right, and then not enough, enough force power, all right, and in the end, we are Jedi, so we can regenerate our force. So let's say force regenerate, and we get 20 for instance, all right? And now in the end, what we have is a new level, a new power level. So we write, we write console write line with string interpolation, this time force power after regeneration, regeneration, and then we enter our value here the force and this will also be interesting not really about the implicit operator but still now here again you see cannot be applied because these are two different types right the force and integer now what we have to do here in our force class again we just add the uh, implicit the static implicit operator and we can do it for both for so or both ways right so the target can be the integer and the source is the force and the other way around. So uh, here, you, you hear my voice, I am a little bit sick, just a tiny bit, little bit of a cold, or I don't know what this is. Already went to the doctor, but he said everything's fine, don't worry about that, so I'm happy. Implicit operator, public static implicit operator. And now again, target is an integer. So we want whatever we get, we want to make an integer out of that, or we want to return an integer. And we get something with the type force in this case. And here now we just write, that's absolutely correct in telecode, we return the power level of our force type. And now the other way around would be something like that. So static implicit operator force and here now we get the power level like that. And then here we return a new force with this power level. All right. And when we have that, we didn't even save, but now the error is gone. So let's run this real quick. And we see the result on my other screen. There it is. So here force skill used successfully. Great. But this is still a problem, right? Force power after regeneration, static, implicit, explicit operator, 
Force. Yep, this is correct, this is the type, but this is not what I want to display here. So we have two options now. We could either override the uh, toString method because this is what's used here, or we just now can explicitly also cast this into an integer. And when I now run this, we see that our force power after regeneration is 90. All right, but now, again, when I uncomment this, then you see we get probably, hopefully, yep, there it is, we get this error back. So we can compare this and also this thingy here, not possible because we cannot implicitly convert it. That's, there's the error message, cannot convert type force to int. But then again, when we add this back, then we can do that and this is awesome. Now there's also the, uh, let's say, counterpart, and this would be the explicit operator. And this is actually similar to this thing here. We have an object and we want to actively cast this, explicitly cast it, because here it's implicitly, you could also say this is happening automatically in the background, right, behind the scenes. But now let's implement something where we can explicitly convert something. For that, I have another example, and this time it's really not video game related or something like that. It's about meters and inch. Because I thought, well, this is actually straightforward and it makes sense. So now let me just create a new uh, class here, a meter for instance, and then another one for inch. All right, and now regarding the meter, here we have the following, and maybe I just uh, edit this out because you really don't have to watch this. So what we have here first is just a property value of type double and a constructor where you can provide the value and then set the, the actual value property here. Now regarding inch, pretty similar actually. So again, we have here in our inch class a property value and actually to make this more correct, we can uh, make the setup private, so it makes more sense for the constructor maybe. So here now we can uh, create an instance of an inch with a double value and also meter. Now in our program CS, let me make this real quick. Here we, well in the end I want to um, cast a meter into an inch, of course. So now here we've got a new meter. Um, with the value one, so we have one meter, and now we want to know how uh, much or many inches is this. So inch, inch, and then of course you could think of a function to do that, right? But what we can also do is we just say, okay, this is actually a meter, and cast this uh, into an inch explicitly. So again, we are doing this by ourselves. We are explicitly saying, okay, this shall be actually now. Uh, turned into an inch. Now, what can we do about that? Well, here in our meter class now, we can use the static explicit operator. So for instance, now down here, we just say public static explicit this time, explicit operator, and we want to get an inch here. And we're providing a meter like that operator tor and here now we return a new inch where we use our value but multiply it by 39.37 and this now should give us the actual value you see the error is gone but now i want to see the value so what how can we do that well again string interpolation of course and a console write line so a console right line it is and here let's say meter meter is in nope meter in inch is Jesus okay like that and now just the inch value this again won't work because this is a custom type and we just see something like that meter meter in inch is inch. Great, that's correct, but not what we want to see. So now let's uh, choose the other option to override the string method. Maybe this is also interesting for you guys. So here now, what we do is public override string to string. And here we just return 
the uh, value to string and we do exactly the same thing here in our meta class like that all right and now let me run this one more time there we are and now we see one meter in inch is 39.37 all right and that's pretty much it all right so now you hopefully know what the implicit the static implicit operator conversion operator could also say and the explicit ones are about i think this is really interesting and not a lot of devs know that so now you do. Again, I hope you learned something. If so, please hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel, guys. Please, please, please. It would mean the world to me. Thanks to all my patrons. I love every single one of you. And thank you very much for watching. And I hope I see you next time. Take care.